What's up, Fox Den Fox here, and what you can see behind me is, in fact, a Walmart TV. I braved the Colorado blizzard because I have no impulse control, and the Walmart TV has got me acting unwise. So, I decided today we'll be taking a look at it and seeing if it was worth the $190 that it cost, or if I should have gotten something else. Alrighty. Here it is in all of its glory. Now, it is a 43-inch TV, so it's about the smallest I'd recommend people go for in 2023. Um, but I wanted something smaller for my room since my main TV is in the living room. And I'm perfectly happy to have it in the living room. Uh, whenever I have friends over or anything like that, it always works out great. But I wanted to have something in my room so I can play The Last of Us in peace every once in a while. Now, what scares me is that this has three and a half stars on Walmart.com, and I did not look into it because I have very bad impulse control. And because I figured most of the issue was with the price, which was originally $240, I got it on sale for $192. This isn't just an unboxing, it's also going to be a review, so I will get into the more nitty-gritty stuff like the Delta E color span, the latency, and things like that as time goes on, but for right now we're just going to unbox the thing. Something that I do notice about this TV right off the bat is that it is Roku TV compatible, so it's not a Fire TV, but I love Roku. Um, the remotes are great, and it's just a nice seamless thing because I have Roku as all of my TVs. So it is my favorite Kill the Planet Styrofoam. I don't know why companies refuse to do just wooden anymore, but uh, I'm sure it doesn't cost that much more. Or at least cardboard or something, not literally environmentalism terrorism. In that styrofoam you get two Rayovac batteries for a TV remote, nice. Just a standard Roku remote. Alrighty, what's very funny about Roku remotes to me is that they're all different. My roommate has one that's got like the old classic Netflix Hulu. Mine's got um, Netflix, Disney Plus, Apple TV. Not Apple TV, I think Hulu and uh, Roku. And this one's got Netflix, Disney Plus, TV Plus, and HBO Max. So it is updated to all the things that I use except for Apple TV Plus because I'm not that dumb. And it is a custom made Walmart one. So it says on which is the brand of Walmart's uh, TVs and other stuff. So On is a big company. In fact, I bought something else from them too. And this is what they're exceptionally good at, is very cheaply made things. So I got like the Connect wall charger to um, hook up my lights over here so that way I could have my three USB over there. And this was $5, so it's nothing to complain about at all. Um, it's just a simple USB 2.4, or no, simple USB 2.0. It's a 2.4 amp charger. There we go. Not only can you see the cut corners, but you can feel them as well. So first things first, this TV is not thin. It is about this thick. So, for reference, Mountain Dew can, because I'd be slurping it. It's almost a Mountain Dew can thick, y'all. So, <laughs> be ready for that. American metric system. And also, this thing is so light. It's unbelievable for how thick it is. So... So something you have to kind of take into consideration with a TV like this is, are you okay with that? Again, a soda can thick sort of um, width is not a small thing. For me, it doesn't matter because I'm throwing it on a TV stand anyway, right? But if that is something you care about, if you want to mount it and make it look very sleek against your wall, I can understand that being a drawback. But I would also be careful trying to go for looks because in this sort of price range, I think the cheaper the build, the better LCD you're going to get. Uh, it's not an LCD, it's an LED, excuse me. So I don't necessarily mind it being as grossly cheap as it is. I'm hoping that that means they're able to buy the panel from somebody of a little bit higher caliber. Um, my guess is probably some of the same panels that like TCL uses and other low-end models, which are very good for being the price that they are. I have no complaints with my TCL 55-inch outside. So I'm excited to see what this can do. I'm going to hook it up and I will get back to you. So I've spent today with the on Walmart 4K TV, 43 inch, and I have some things to say about it. Now, the way I'm going to be doing reviews from here on out, I finally have it solidified, 
is going to be like a grading system. So no matter how many categories I have, I will divide it by 100 and give you the percentage points. And it is based on the American grading system where C is average, D is below average, F fails, and then B and A are good. Uh, and then A is, of course, the best. So... And I was able to encompass pretty much everything I wanted to talk about with this TV in these three different categories. So let's start off with the build quality. Now the build, as I said when I was unboxing it, is incredibly cheaply made and um, it is very thick as well. So those are two big detractors just in terms of an aesthetic choice um, and it just feels like it might not last a very long time. Not only that, but it has only two HDMI ports, which means that you can only hook up two consoles or one cable box and one console at a time. And for somebody like me who has an Xbox, a Switch, and a PS5, even if I didn't have cable, which I don't, it's still too few. So I think that these days a minimum should be four, so that is going to detract points as well. So let's start off with build quality. Now, it is incredibly thick, which is a big demerit if you're trying to wall mount a TV, and it's just not good to look at in the year of 2023 when flat screens are made for very, very few dollars more on other TVs from TCL and things like that. It's also incredibly cheaply made. Everything is incredibly cheap, thin plastic. I think if you were to drop this TV on accident, say goodbye to everything. I don't think that this is durable enough to hold up even a minor drop. It only has two HDMI ports, which means that if you have a cable box, you can only hook up one console at a time. I think these days four should be the minimum, and I've seen four on budget TVs before, um, so there's really no excuse for that, and that is a big demerit. That said, the aux cable is actually really good. Uh, not a lot of TVs have an aux cable built into them, and I'm very glad that this one did. So it's actually going to give it a little bit of an extra point because I really appreciate just being able to plug in my soundboard through an aux cable and have it work across all HDMIs, all two of them. And the speakers out of the box are good enough. They're fine, but they're not anything fantastic. They'll get you by uh, until you get a soundbar. So build quality is going to get a six out of 10. The LED quality is interesting because it's not a bad display, but it requires fine tuning, which is a demerit for even tech users. TVs should come with good enough options to just work straight out of the box. Now, I, when I say fine tuning, I don't mean switching it to like normal mode. I mean having to go into the settings to increase the brightness because this display is also very dull. Also, the color temperature might be too warm for some people. If you're not in a very dark room, I think that the temperature is a little too warm on the normal setting. And of course, it's HDR and This thing has the HDR sticker, but it's 400 nits. It's not going to blow you away. The blacks are most definitely not solid blacks. And the brights get reasonably bright, but nothing too fancy. It definitely won't blow your socks off when transitioning from like SDR, which means that overall it gets a six out of 10. And the last category before we talk about value is going to be latency. Now, I do not have a professional device to test latency, unfortunately, but I will say I was playing video games yesterday and game mode turns on automatically, which is great. It works straight out of the box. Um, I just had to adjust the brightness and picture mode, but it just flipped on game mode and it worked well enough for me to be like, yep, this is good enough for consoles. I don't think I'd be playing CSGO on it anytime soon, but the input lag is not noticeable enough for you to care if you're somebody like me who kind of just gets the 4K 60 FPS and just runs with it. It reminds me of any other Roku TV in this budget range, which means that game mode is fine, but it's not anything incredibly fast. And it also has quite the slow UI. So when clicking into channels and clicking out of them, there will be slow down here and there. So I also am going to demerit a point for that out of latency, which is going to give latency an eight out of 10. Yeah. Okay. So we talked about build quality, LED quality and latency, but none of that matters if it's priced in the right way. So all these numbers don't mean anything without a sort of value proposition added to it. Now, this thing usually retails for $243. At $243, don't buy it. Factoring in the $243 price point, it gets a 50% on the final verdict, which means it fails. For $243, there are so many better options. Not only can you get a bigger TV than a 43 inch, you can get a better TV by a better brand. You can get an Amazon Fire TV, you can get a Vizio, you can get an Insignia, you can get a TCL, you can get a bunch of different brands for this sort of price point. All of them are going to be built better than this thing. So at $248, that is a fat, don't just not recommend, just walk past it. For the price that I got it, $198, 
that sweetens the deal a little bit. You're talking a full $50 off, and it makes it one of the cheapest 4K TVs I've seen. And because of that, I'm a little bit more lenient when it comes to the bigger build quality and things like that. Now that's not how I grade. Everything has already been pre-graded and the value is just another set of 10 to add on to this. So at $198, it only subtracts two points out of 10, which means that in total, if you get it for $198, you get a 76%, which is a C-class TV, which makes it a decent proposition. C is average, and it's not on the lower end of C either. Um, I think for $198, it's going to be the cheapest 4K TV you can get. I don't think I've ever seen a TV, a 4K TV for under 200 bucks, even in the 43-inch range. If there are other TVs in that sort of price range that you want to look for, be my guest. I know there are a lot more options if you go up to 220 which I recommend. This is only a C. I don't recommend this for everybody. But I can give it a recommendation for people who are on a very tight budget who want to have a 43-inch TV, and I don't think they're going to be disappointed pleased with this. The display is fine with a little bit of fine tuning. The speakers are good enough, the latency is good enough, and the entire TV itself for $198 is good enough and might even surprise you a little bit. Just don't expect any feature set whatsoever. Be ready to only have two HDMI ports and really not HDR. And I actually think that it's not a bad buy. If you'd like to see me review more Walmart products, I am happy to do so. Let me know in the comments down below, and it helps me out a lot if you subscribe and like this video. Anything to get more reach out there if you want to see more Walmart-based videos, the on-brand is very fun to look at. So thank you so much for watching this video in particular. If you liked it, like, subscribe, do what you usually do, and as always, buy yourself something nice.